South Africa is often considered a new world wine region, but in essence, it's probably an old wine region. Wine production was actually established by the Dutch back in the 17th century. There used to be a trading post, a little stop in Cape Town. It was meant as a replenishing of refuel stop for the Dutch on the way over to the East Indies and other parts of Asia. They must have noticed that the climate was suitable for grape growing. Eventually they planted vines and in the 18th, 19th century, the sweet wines of Constantia were actually some of the most renowned wines in the world. In the 20th century, South African wines weren't really established on world markets. They were oftentimes synonymous for bulk cheap wine, but in the recent decades, these wines have garnered a lot of accolades around the world. I just wish that they were more readily available. In a 2021 census, South Africa was the number eight producing wine country in the world, sandwiched between Argentina and Germany. The country is in the south tip of the African continent, and then cold winds from the Antarctic come through and cool down the region. It's known for having a Mediterranean climate. The country's broken into five geographical units that goes down to wine regions, then 30 different wine districts, and over 98 wards. Those geographical rules were drafted in 1973, and there's no rules on production. Wine people that are real sticklers on terroir really pay attention to those wards. The most planted grape in South Africa is Chenin Blanc, which we have one here today, and the leading red grape is actually Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't pretend to be the world's foremost expert on South Africa. That's why I asked Wines of South Africa USA to send some wine so I could taste them. The video is not sponsored, but they did send wines. I'm not going to taste these blind because I don't know a ton about South African wines. I've tasted some of the famous producers, Ken and Culp, Hamilton Russell, David Nadia, but all these wines here, I have not tasted before, so I'm looking forward to it. When I was really starting to ramp up my wine education in Singapore, I would buy some Ken and Culp's once in a while, but one of my go-tos was actually a Niederberg winemaker's selection. I think it was a Cabernet Shiraz blend. In Singapore, I think that wine was like 15, 16 US dollars, which is incredibly cheap in Singapore. One of my great sadnesses is that I have not been to South Africa yet. Again, I hope to make it there this year or maybe early next year, knock on wood. Enough of me blabbing, mate. You ready? I'm ready to taste some wines. Get a taste out of my Gabriel Standard Edition. Love these glasses. Again, I have a link in the description box below if you wanna check them out. They're gonna work great with all types of wines. Let's get into it. A lot of you might know more about South African wines than I do. Unfortunate, you don't see a huge selection of South African wines where I am in the US. Okay, first up, we're gonna taste a Method Cop Classic. You open a sparkling wine bottle, you wanna tilt it at a 45 degree angle, turn the bottle, and you don't want a big pop, actually. You want as little sound as possible. Let's see. Pretty good, not bad. First wine up, we have Boschendal. This is the Brut Non Vintage Method Cap Classic. Says founded in 1685. $26, 51% Chardonnay, 49% Pinot Noir. Method Cap Classic is the name of sparkling wines made in the Champagne Method in South Africa. Their aging requirements say that you have to have the wines at least 12 months on the lees, just like in Champagne. That's the minimum requirement as well. For those of you who don't know, during fermentation, the yeast cells die, they fall to the bottom. Those dead yeast cells are called lees. You leave white wines or even red wines on the lees, builds up some creaminess, builds up some body. There was no shortage of bubbles in this wine, that's for sure. Let's give it a smell. This is a really nice sparkler at 26 Six bucks, that's a heck of a lot of value. So funny, I was just in Boston pouring at the Boston Wine Expo and they were there, but I didn't go over their booth because I knew I was gonna taste the wines on camera. So let's give it a smell here. Have to say, very toasty on the, a lot of toastiness at first. Lemon, white pear, brioche. The toastiness is kind of in between champagne and French Accorta esque. I wouldn't go all the way champagne. Like, doesn't have all some of those age notes I really like, but it does have a ton of yeastiness. I like it a lot. There were a lot of bubbles. Let's see if those blew off. Let's see how they are right now. Not as full bodied and rich as champagne, some champagnes. It's a little bit more crisp and rich. But I have to say, and the bubbles are pretty aggressive, but I have to say it's pretty good so far. It smelled quite toasty, but on the palate, a little bit more on the fruitier side. This is a heck of a good bottle of bubbles, especially at 26 bucks. I would give it a solid 89 points. I think it's actually very, very, very good. A nice start, especially with champagne prices rising. I just did a champagne overrated, underrated video, and I had to look up some of the prices, and prices are rising just like anything else. So 26 bucks, it's a heck of a value. This is the Ranica 2021 Chenin Blanc. This is a biodynamic producer says so this little Demeter and Ecos it's got EU certifications on it for 
ecological. 28 bucks. Chenin Blanc's the most planted grape variety in the country. As I'm filming this in a few days, I'm actually heading to Italy and then the Loire in France. We're gonna be tasting a lot of Chenin Blanc, so I'm really excited. It's a grape that I love. Some of the most exciting wines in South Africa are old vine Chenin Blanc. This has a little bit of color, so it looks like it possibly can be macerated. Like I said, I'm not an expert in South African wines, but I have tasted some excellent fresh and barrel fermented examples. Looks like this could have some skin contact. Let's give it a smell here. Wow, for its color, it's it doesn't smell like it has a ton of skin contact or it's a full-fledged orange wine. It smells quite crisp, flinty, very slaty, uh, a lot of pineapple flavors, more yellow peach, some more yellow fruit. It is extremely mineral, which I find really attractive. Pretty full body. I tried not to look up much on these wines, so it, it'd be a first impression. I don't taste a lot of oak on it, it, or it could be barrel fermented in old barrels or just kept in the lease for a long time. Pretty full, I don't get oaky flavors, but the concentration, it's really intense. I was expecting an orange wine, being a biodynamic producer, it's just good wine. Real rich, but bone dry. I get a little hint on the back end of what possibly could be wood flavors, but it's not a vanilla bond by any stretch of the imagination. I think a lot of times, Chenin Blanc, the acidity can really get to people. So I think this is actually fantastic. And especially as biodynamic, for me, I think it's excellent. Let's give it a 91 plus. I think it's very good. Okay. 28 bucks. Fans of biodynamic producers. So in essence, it's probably gonna be more like a natural wine, but it's very clean, not funky at all. I think it's fantastic. Let's move on here. Next up, we have the Aslina by Ntsiki Biela. This is the Chardonnay 2021 from South Africa. Oh, by the way, the Reineke, this is from Stellenbosch. Boschendel has the region of Western Cape, so it's kind of a generic appellation. This is also a wine from the Western Cape. I do know that this wine is actually made and the brand is owned by a South African. It is a woman of color, which I know is a rarity in that part of the world. I think just in general, there are not a lot of people of color that own a winery. So I think that's very cool. This comes in at 26 bucks. Let's give it a go here. It's a little bit muted. I must say more white pear, white flint. It definitely smells like Chardonnay though. You get a little bit of that touch of banana, white peach, lemon, but you kind of have to search for it. It's a little bit shy. It, it does not smell like an industrial wine. It smells like a crafted wine. It's just not showing its best right now. On the palate, <clears throat> pretty full body. This is a good wine. My only critique is, <laughs> It becomes real citrusy and it's not as long as I'd like. I think it's a good, well-made wine. It's not bringing me the excitement of maybe these other two wines. I would probably put this at a solid 88 points. The hard thing is that when you're tasting wine side by side, if a wine is good yet it's following up a wine that really impressed you like this Reineke, that can be a problem. 88 points, pretty good wine. Would just like a little bit more fruit. I wouldn't recommend it as highly as the Reineke, but it's, it's a good Chardonnay, good story. Let's move on here. Next up, we have the Momento, the 2019 Grenache. This is from Svart. Svartland, 35 bucks. Svartland is a little bit northwest of Cape Town, area known for a lot of old vine Chenin Blanc, there's some Pinotage, but the most exciting wines coming out of that region are GSM or Rhone grapes. Dave Nadi is probably one of the more famous producers. I've tasted some of those wines, I thought they were outstanding. This is Grenache coming in at 13.5 alcohol, old vines also owned by a woman. Lighter in color, which I already like, almost like California Pinot Noir like in color. I like actually New World Grenache a lot. Like Australians, Californians, I just think that Grenache is such an excellent grape. Stay tuned for an upcoming uh, Grenache blind tasting of Grenaches all around the world, by the way. I'm already encouraged by the color. I know it's pure Grenache. Let's give it a taste here. I still remember when I was just learning about wine, some of my first press trips, I was with a Belgium writer, I believe, and I just told him how much I loved Grenache, and he was like, it's a good grape to love. It can be like Burgundy. Let's just give this a go here. Very strawberry licorice, almost like Twizzlers come out of the glass. Not overly candy, just kind of that aroma. Pepper, I think, I'm maybe not that Twizzlers, maybe the black licorice. Some people might say this is Pinot Noir blind or like a New World Pinot Noir. Er, it's really dirt. It's so funny because sometimes when you have earthy wines, they can be too earthy and they're lacking fruit. This has the fruit. Yes, it has some of the earthiness. To me, it smells really good. This wine is right up my alley. This is exactly what I want to taste. Now, I'm not gonna give it a humongous big score because it's not type, that type of wine, it's easy. It's more of a medium to light bodied red wine. Grenache, you know, can climb in alcohol, so that's the problem like in places like Chateauneuf de Pas, Priorat, those are two areas that are well known for Grenache, Garnacha, where the alcohols can spike. This is just beautiful. It's juicy, it's delicate. It's This is exactly the type of red wines that I like to drink these days. Fruity with a touch of earthiness, medium, Bodied. the tannins are extremely soft. 
This has texture, this has length. For me, 91 points, I think it's good. I guess I'm not getting the biggest score in the world. Don't let scores fool you. I'm just saying it because it's not the most complex wine of all time. But this is the type of wine that I really enjoy drinking. It's something that I probably want to open the bottle and drink it tonight. That's good. Before we move on to the last wine, I'd like to know in the comments below, do you like rum tasting not blind? I've been doing a lot of blind tasting videos lately. I'm actually enjoying this process right now, not having to do blind tasting. I think it's a lot of fun. Drop it in the comments below. We have the Beesler. This is the Pinotage from Stellenbosch 2018. This is the most expensive wine and the bunch comes in at 50 bucks. Pinotage is one of the signature varieties of South Africa. It's a cross between Pinot Noir and Cinso. There was a lot of Cinso planted because it was a high yield variety then producers wanted to make better wine so they crossed Pinot Noir with it and that's where you get Pinotage it's a cross not a hybrid a cross is when you have two Vitis vinifera which is the European species of grape put them together a hybrid is when there is a parent that is actually an American breed of plant with the European Vitis vinifera so a lot of people get that confused some people really hate Pinotage think it can be too animal it can be too wild crazy they can be light and insipid or they can be rich and complex this is darker in color and at the price point 50 bucks i'm assuming it's going to be a little bit richer comes in at 14.5 alcohol so it's not shy at all i've tasted some pretty decent pinotages that remind me of good zweigelts from austria let's give this a go here <laughs> particular let's see here dark brambleberry fruit almost twiggy blackberry again this reminds me of zweigelt again a little bit of oak but more mahogany not vanilla tar interesting nose wow I'm gonna have to say the nose was not very attractive. The palate is incredibly complex. The acidity really stretches out the finish. This is a, this is actually a really well-made wine. I do not know how to compare it to something that a lot of you will be familiar again with. Again, it reminds me of a Zweigelb. It's super complex. It's a rich wine. It's an age-worthy wine. It's the most expensive wine. It's the most ambitious wine here. <sighs> Just good wine. I think the flavor profile might throw off people a lot, but the complexity, almost Zweigelt, almost Southern Roni, almost, you know, throw a little bit of Italian acidity in there. For me, this is like a 92 point wine. Now here's the thing. I score this wine higher, the Beesler. I would prefer to drink the Grenache for me personally, but the Beesler I think is a better wine. So tell me, what do you think about South African wines? Have you tasted any of these before? Drop it in the comments below.